Oh boy. All right. I could have done another 15 minutes on animals in Italia. Yeah, sure. I want to munch. Squad. Squad. I want to munch. Squad. I've been hearing from a lot of my Canadian friends about Christmas pizza. Huh. Now, Christmas pizza is a product of Boston Pizza, which is owned, of course, by Dragon's Den stalwart Jim Trilliving. Used to be a Mountie. Man, that always sounds now like you're saying successful. Jim for a living. Go on. Nope, it's Jim Trilliving. Uh, yeah, he owns uh, Mr. Lube, owns Boston Pizza. Huge success. And Boston Pizza is going hard this year. Uh, they are going hard because it is the holiday season, and they are bringing you a caroling pizza box. Huh. Huh. Now, this isn't going to seem that wild, but we're, we're, we'll get to it. So the, the the pizza box, when you open it, it will play the song Carol of the Bells. How? Oh, how? So you open it, and I'm assuming they're, you know, we perfected this technology with greeting cards. Uh, you just open it, and then it'll play Carol of the Bells, right? Uh, Boston Pizza's Niels Van Oyen, a senior marketing manager, says that uh, many of its pizza recipes are unexpected and creative, so it wanted creative assets to match. He says that a caroling box is a continuing expression of the brand's unique point of view. Oh, that's okay. a long sentence that means nothing. Here's our point of view. What if the box sang? Now, boys, why are they making a caroling pizza box, you might ask? Well, for one, they're seeing takeout and delivery become increasingly relevant. Boston Pizza is classically sort of a sit-down chain where you can enjoy a nice poutine pizza with your family. But right now they're promoting something very special, and it's the Christmas pizza. Huh. Imagine a pizza Wait, give me a second. Love. Okay. Okay. I've, Imagine I've, it with all your favorite toppings. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, now get a rake and <laughs> sc scrape all of those off. Okay. okay, so the good toppings are off, right? Yeah. So now we're going to scoop on their seasoned rotisserie turkey. Okay. A house-made stuffing. Okay. Rosemary sage cream sauce. Oh, okay. And Italian cheeses. Okay. And then we're going to ladle on Ooh. some warm turkey gravy. Oh, boy. <laughs> some warm turkey gravy. And right in the middle, a huge dollop of cranberry sauce. Oh boy! Oh, I and when you buy it, you get a free Toblerone. <laughs> with okay, it. okay, that's not on Listen, it. The whole time I was like, "This sounds dope as hell." Waiting for the goof to kick in. It's receiving a free Toblerone at the end that really takes it over the top for me for some reason. You get a free Toblerone. I would I, uh, with this delicious pizza. Here's what I would be afraid of. Now we are, of course, uh, forewarned. But if I was somebody who just like ordered a pizza from them and it came and I opened the box and as upon opening the box began making any kind of noise at all whatsoever, I would drop it on the ground. A meat like I would throw it across the room, assuming I don't know there's a swarm of bees or something inside. Is there bees inside? There and then, uh, sorry, I'm reading down here a little bit. There are bees inside. Just to let you know how wild this place gets, they also have cranberry barbecue ribs. Huh. I don't understand this restaurant at all. Well, we ordered a shitload of cranberries. We just got them. We got to put them on everything. The box sings to you, and it's got Thanksgiving inside it. Yeah, that's uh, this is this is one of the best things you've ever brought. I would say, Justin. Hey, if you guys can be quiet for 30 seconds, I want to play you an ad for it. That's that's right. Munch Squad AV, here we go. Christmas pizza, Boston pizza, this is an ad for a pizza. Cranberry sauce, gravy on toss, turkey as well. And also cheese, why is there cheese? Cause we love cheese, turkey and cheese, four kinds of cheese. Come try our Christmas pizza, this commercial's from Boston Pizza. Here's a turkey dinner on a pizza, pizza underneath the turkey dinner. Christmas pizza, free Toblerone with the pizza, get it today, Boston Pizza, gather around. Free so Toblerone. That's, that's what they're, 
free <laughs> Toblerone in the pizza, I but do. not on the pizza. Don't get it twisted. It will certainly melt in the delivery process, guaranteed. I really appreciate that you did that, Justin, because it did answer my one qualm with this incredible Thanksgiving pizza, which is that it, they still went ahead and put some fucking cheese on it. It's not. They did put cheese it's on not, it. The rest of it, whatever, cranberry stuffing, mama's broccoli salad, whatever, like go nuts on it. And it's, you know, Thanksgiving on a on some crust. I'm into that. But then they actually also melted some cheese all over it. Mm-hmm. And that commercial kindly explains, well, we like cheese. Yeah. Okay, Boston Pizza. <laughs> hey, because we had cheese. That's what they should have yeah. said. Hey, Jim for a living. We have you, it with a bucket Jim load. Jim for a living, could you step in to R&D real quick? Uh, so, uh, wait, hold on. Let me do my fucking gym for a living. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, we did what you asked, and we put a whole fucking Thanksgiving dinner on a Christmas pizza for some reason. Oh, that's great. Oh, that uh, is great. The problem is- I love the, I love the sound of this pizza. Well, there's nothing, there's nothing to hold it all. It's just a bunch of wet, goopy ingredients kind of piled onto- a flat surface is just going everywhere. So, well, let me think about my assets. I got Mr. Lube. Does that? Does no, that I help? would say that just it, that would make it more goopy. I would argue. Oh, okay, I also own Boston Pizza, the restaurant that we're <laughs> standing in right now. And you know what we got at Boston Pizza? Pizza. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll let you get there. Cause that's gonna be real satisfying. Singing boxes. I don't know, Jim. You had us working on that too. Can't we just make regular pizza with like cheese? Okay. It's just that I didn't get my dog food in pizza. Hold on, hold on, hold on. God damn it! These rocket boots were supposed to <laughs> kick on whenever I said cheese, and I was gonna blast out the ceiling. Okay. God damn it! All right, hold on one second. Fuck. Let me try again. Hold on. Cheese! Oh God, he exploded! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> am I am I still here? No, you're on fire! Ah, oh, damn it! Hold on, let me. Bitch He's this melting out. the hey. cheese on the pizza. <gasps> it's there. Perfect. You go. It was all part of my plan. Anyway, I'm glad I could help. Cheese! Okay, now it's working. God damn now it! Worked that time. Ah, oh, shit. Hey, how about another question? Yeah. Do you have a question about what just happened? I don't have any questions about what just happened. Makes it made, it to all me. track to me. Oh, thank oh. God. I want a munch. I want to munch. Squad. Squad. Hello, welcome to Munch Squad. It's podcast within a podcast about the latest and greatest in brand eating. I have... If it if it so please the court, I just have a cup. I have a couple, two to three that I'd love to get through, because uh, there I don't want a new year to begin and still have stuff on my desk that I have to uh, clear off. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. Edible. This is our sub segment of Munch Squad. It's our CBD update, which I've decided to start calling CBD's nuts. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I get it. Welcome to the party, Edible Arrangements. The world's largest franchiser of fresh fruit arrangements has officially debuted a new Incredible Edibles hemp-derived CBD product line, including smoothies and chocolate-dipped fruit. It's from Incredible Edibles, a company which focuses on supplying CBD with traceability and authenticity from the hemp farm to the finished product. That's right, folks. Farm to smoothie CBD. We finally fucking done it. Quote from Tariq Freed, the founder and CEO of Edible Arrangements. <clears throat> Consumers are showing an increasing demand for CBD products, and now is the perfect time for us to make our mark on this flourishing industry. We've always prided That's ourselves really on our good, I just want to say, hey, good euphemism for cash in. Yeah, we have always prided ourselves on our knack for innovation, and we continue to do so with the introduction of new menu innovations for fresh and healthy alternatives. In the case of incredible edible CBD products, the alternative we now offer is high-quality, traceable CBD with a focus on health, not high. I'd like to f- go back to where it's talking about increasing demand. Am I to believe, Tariq, that 
at least one time in human existence, someone blew into the doors of an edible ranger and just shouted like, I need this fruit to have CBD in it. <laughs> hey, you said edible, right? You want our chocolate dipped strawberries to get you fucked up? No, it's for health. Not high. Okay. Red Lobster has made an, a Cheddar Bay Biscuit sweater. <gasps> it's for the holidays, and it's um, got little lobsters on it and Cheddar Bay Biscuits on it, and it's got a special insulated pocket to help keep your Cheddar Bay Biscuits To help steal warm. your Cheddar Bay Biscuits, we <laughs> yes. should be clear, yes? How big a, hey, <laughs> hey, Juice, how big a pocket we talking? It says it, they're kept warm to perfect. I'm looking at a picture of a woman with four biscuits in her sweater pocket. Fuck yeah, okay? that's good. That's good. I was worried it, it would just be a single serve. For those looking to turn heads at their office party, uh, I think that that you would turn heads in this sweater, but you'd turn them back and forth in kind of a sad way. <laughs> you know, <laughs> kind of, you uh, would oscillate heads. Right. Uh, those looking to oscillate heads in a slow fashion. Uh, or give an unforgettable gift to a seafood loving one. Lo seafood. Uh, it says a seafood loving loved one. Just do it with the first draft on this one. Huh? Red Lobster. Okay. Well, uh, Our Cheddar Bay biscuits. It's because the, originally the copy said a seafood loved one, and they're like that doesn't <laughs> seem right. It's guaranteed to help holiday en enthusiasts slay s l e i g h uh -huh. all season long. I'm trying not to fill up before I get to my shrimp scampi sweater that I also ordered. So I'm going to pass on these. Uh, that's fair enough. It's $40. You can buy it if you don't value your life. Uh, last one real quick. Uh, and I want to say thank you to Robin for this one. The Michael Jordan Steakhouse is offering a limited time Space Jam menu. Huh? Boy. If you're a diehard Space Jam fan like many of us in Chicago, you will be thrilled to hear that Michael Jordan's Steakhouse is offering a limited time Space Jam inspired menu. From now until April 13th, 2020, you could try a Space Jam inspired meal during every Chicago Bulls home game. For anyone who's ever wanted to be like Mike, this meal will take you back to the Michael Jordan days and give anyone who tries it a feeling of nostalgia and a chance to eat like Mike. Uh huh. That would be a fucking <laughs> wild, wild reaction to this meal. The new item, titled Mike's Secret Stuff, yes! yeah, cool. is no joke. <laughs> cool. It includes a Space Jam burger. It consists of a 10-ounce beef patty that's stacked with BBQ braised pork belly, cool. dill pickled, stout mustard pickled onions, and aged cheddar what cheese. What does that have to do with Space Jam? Well, you eat it off of Wayne Knight's nude body. <laughs> That's not enough for you. The menu, how could it not be enough? And the menu item also comes as a combo with hand cut fries and a Mike secret stuff salted caramel milkshake. Hey, Mike, what's your secret stuff? Well, friend, it turns out it's fucking salted caramel milkshakes. Help me deliver on the b ball court. The FDA must have a law preventing anyone from advertising, quote, secret stuff on yeah. their food menus. Yes, because it can cover any number of sins. What makes me mad is that they call the menu item, which is a burger, Mike's Secret Stuff, and then they called the milkshake Mike's Steve Secret Stuff. Like, you were so close. If you had just waited, you could have gotten it into a drink form. Yes. But no, you had to call the burger. You can't just call them both Mike's Secret Stuff. No, Justin, to Michael be fair. Jordan was not beginning games by eating a <laughs> fucking cheeseburger. Mike has a lot of secrets, Justin. On it. And then he, and then a milkshake at the to f wash it down that's not how mike began his his games i just i it just I, i'm bothered by something that seems so thematic that then once you peel one layer back has zero theme at all like you could put it's some fig like jam on there and i would have been like okay done now you're fucking talking but there's nothing I would sooner believe that Mike's secret stuff is fig jam. That would, if I just went back, back, back uh, in the locker room and saw Michael Jordan eating piles of fig jam from a jar with a spoon, I would. That would be more plausible. Producing to me. eggs from some sort of sack. 
<laughs> the executive chef of Michael Jordan's steakhouse, Craig Cooper, is thrilled to be offering Bulls and Michael Jordan fans alike this opportunity. A burger! We're, a burger we're doing, milkshake with fries! Qu- quote, we're doing it with really great ingredients oh. and going over the top. Yeah, I mean, it would be better than if you went with, we're doing it with bad food that we can't sell otherwise. <laughs> um, if they wanted to be really thematic, the drink should just be like a glass of water. But then you yeah, drink Michael's it and you beat the hydration and Michael's secret stuff is hydration and plenty of sleep. We were, this is continuing the quote, we were inspired by Space Jam and who knows? Maybe the Mike's secret stuff shake will be enough to bring the Bulls back to their Michael Jordan era prime. So, Craig, just so I can be fucking clear, huh. you have you are saying that maybe if the entire Bulls franchise drank a salted caramel milkshake before the game began, they might get, launch back to prominence. Or, is that where we're going with this? Perhaps even stranger, Justin. What he is suggesting is if some people in a restaurant drink the shake, the enjoyment of said shake might be enough. <laughs> To power a basketball team to victory, <laughs> perhaps miles away. The thing, the fictional setting that Craig has created, yes, thank you, Travis, is not that the team, it's that a city would love a salted caramel milkshake so much that their favorite team would be good at basketball yes. again. That is what Craig is, that's a good milkshake, Craig. Are you sure? Is it just have the regular things like, uh, salt and caramel and ice cream. Imagine I- if in Angels of the Outfield, the actual like scenario had been that there were angels somewhere else in the city, and everyone was so excited about those angels that the baseball team won. And that's what's going on here. Angels a few blocks over. Yes. <laughs> angels would- at the Walmart. Mm. And the I- angels are just shopping, but everyone loves them. I would pay 200 American dollars for a Space Jam hamburger. If, a Space Jam burger. A Space Jam burger. If Michael Jordan himself ran towards my table with it in his hand, no plate, <laughs> and jumped way up in the air and dunked it right into my head. But then he picked me up off the ground where he flattened me, and he stands me up and dusts me off and says, do you want to come in the back with me and help me hurt the monsters? <laughs> <laughs> and then me and him got to go back in the kitchen where he's got the Monstars tied up, captured, and then yep. he he and I hurt them because of the bad because of how bad they were to the Looney Tunes. So, in Space Jam Two, uh-huh. we can only assume that LeBron will drink LeBron's secret stuff. Now, as we all know, Michael Jordan's secret stuff was water, and. LeBron's secret stuff, I'm assuming, will also be water. Maybe Sprite. At some point, the Looney Tunes must become suspicious of pro basketball players trying to sell them uh, high-priced water. Get I mean, the, the other side of that, Justin, is that, and I'm not saying this about LeBron James, mind you, but that at some point, a, an NBA star gives them, say, anabolic steroids <laughs> to make them successful at basketball, and they're like, finally, something that works. I... Um, I do look forward to the inevitable Wayne Knight cameo and hearing a room full of seven-year-olds scream, who the fuck is that? <laughs> or just hear him yell, Newman! Because that is a show <laughs> that preve- like it stretches beyond age. What will be more depressing, that the room full of seven-year-olds don't know who Wayne Knight is or that they don't know who Michael Jordan is? Oh. Depends or- on if you're Michael Jordan or not. <laughs> Uh, fucking showing up in his Kanga, ready to enjoy a great movie with his family, and he he strides out of the screen with a bottle of his secret stuff, and is met with fucking silence by a room full of seven year olds. Is that a Fortnite guy? What? This is my this? I'm using it now to bail out. A oh. <laughs> Not to freshen up the show, but to save myself. I want a munch. Squad. I want to munch. Squad. Welcome to Munch Squad's podcast on the podcast. But the latest and greatest in brand eating. I want to thank Kendra for sending this one my way. Uh, my, my, my Munch Squad Rangers. My Munch Squadron. What do, the, what, do their munch elf, squadron. what do their elf eyes see? <laughs> they're, they're out there. Uh, they're getting a little bit local. 
Shade Grown, Farm to Podcast, Mud Squads. <laughs> this is from a restaurant called Spangles. Ooh. Sp Spangles. And I think it's in Kansas, because this is from the, the Wichita Eagle, this story uh, uh, about Spangles. It long ago passes 21st birthday. It turns 42 in January. But as of this week, it's now legal to drink. The chain is adding 99. I, this is such a fucking disaster. So, okay, a little background. Spangles looks like a sort of a burger and chicken sandwich, kind of like a, almost looks like a checkers or like a Carl's Jr.'s, you okay. know, in that neck of the woods, you know, maybe like a rallies, that kind of vibe, right? That is checkers. Um, you can't say it twice. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, so the chain is adding 99 cent margaritas and screwdrivers to its menu on Friday at a rest at its restaurant near 21st and Woodlawn. Here's a quote from Dale Stephen, who co-owns Spangle with his brother Craig. <laughs> Sound like fun guys. <laughs> We're just gonna do one store to work out the little training and kinks. After that, we will implement it at all the stores. <gasps> The impetus for drinks comes from increasing fast casual competitors that serve alcohol. This is another quote from Dale Steven. You can't go anywhere with your family that doesn't have alcohol. Whoa, now, Steven's Dale. remedy to that is <laughs> not to try to make a, a, a he doesn't try to make a um, a refuge. He's taking a if you can't beat him, join him kind of approach with this. Well, not, More not than only that. If, you, if you can't beat him, vastly undersell him and get them so fucking faded that they don't know which way is up and they eat three too many burgers. <laughs> oh, see, that all... felt out. Oh, see, I was going to say it felt a little more like Dale was saying like everywhere I go, I don't go anywhere with my family that doesn't have alcohol. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't go to my own restaurant and it was shameful, but now I can't because you couldn't get an alcohol at fast food restaurants, except now you can for nine. It was <laughs> We're shit. always trying to be unique, Steven says. There's just a whole list of things that we always try to be the first at. Apparently, this this checks off uh, getting people fucking plowed <laughs> for no money. <laughs> now, <laughs> Spangles has done drive through business in the evenings, but not much dine-in business. Quote, it kind of leaves a lobby that could use some excitement. In the evenings, all fast foods are relatively so. Oh, Steven, I think things are about oh, to get mighty exciting. Oh. Dude, get your ass to Spangles. We are getting he fucked thinks, up tonight. Yeah, we're going to Spangles for Doug's bachelor party. Holy shit, Doug's going to die. <laughs> he thinks drinks could be a draw. Quote, it's a dine-in only product. No fucking shit, Dale. Dale, are you telling me you don't have the world's first drive through margarita window? That seems like a choice, a choice idea. Just cruise on through and get marked for the or road. If it's the morning times, treat yourself to a screwdriver. Dig into your between the car seats. Pull out enough money to buy three screwdrivers. It's party time. Um, this okay. I I'm actually this is like different for us, but um um, the quotes in this story get so wet and wild. I'm gonna share this. Griffin, I'm going to shoot this to your Slack okay, if you okay. can. And will you just read the quotes and I'll read the story parts, okay? This is how it's written down oh, in the so story. So like a call and response like we're in church. But this is how it's written in the story. Okay. He says Spangles is known for its orange juice slush, so screwdriver slush made sense. Screwdrivers and margaritas, including lime and strawberry ones with salt or sugar rims, are inexpensive and quick to make, Stephen said. We have to be fast. <laughs> there won't be beer or wine at this point. It's down the road. <laughs> the margaritas will each be made with one and a half ounces of tequila, and the screwdrivers will have an ounce of vodka. It's delicious, <laughs> and it's got plenty of alcohol. <laughs> He says there it's clear there's enough alcohol. The second you sip it. <laughs> Steven said the drinks will be served in. A heavy duty glass mug. <laughs> it's going to be done right. <laughs> That's the end of the story. <laughs> Dale Steven, you're about to fucking pop off in that shit, place. Dale. Holy <laughs> shit. Does this have alcohol in it? Sip it. Hey guys, it. Spanglers is broken bad. <laughs> Sip it and you shall know the truth. 
Please, if you're near this area, please hit a wrist spangles and send us a picture of the smoking wreckage. <laughs> when they start getting people plowed on 99 cent margaritas. God bless. It's delicious, though. And it does got plenty of alcohol. Approximately one and one half ounces. Enough to sip it and know. At least the mugs are heavy duty so that when they are thrown frequently, <laughs> they will do tremendous <laughs> ballistic damage. When they're tossed at your server for not bringing the mustard fast enough because you're fucking drunk. <laughs> oh, boy. And demanding mustard. For a, for a mustard magic trick, your buddy says he knows how to do. <laughs> if only that fucking waitress would bring the fucking mustard it's, already. This mustard trick is going to really, quote, blow your ass apart. Wow. <laughs> Shit, <Dale. laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> we want to be the first. First with margaritas. Well. First to have an on-site murder. <laughs> first Spangles location. That's it's also that's scene. the kinks they're going to work out. Like, hey, so uh, we're just going to do it in what we're calling our most expendable store. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for those people who are on the... The uh the 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 slab there for the hey first, boss for the trial hey boss hey we just got the menus printed it says ninety nine cent that can't be it right this can't be right hey boss it's our first night of this promotion I did want to ask how many windows do you have at your house kind of saved to replace the windows here because we're on our third window already we were just wondering just, could we get some chicken wire up in front of the registers something. can you for just fucking stuff? like roadhouse this entire establishment <laughs> that would be great could you get us a chiller please no not a refrigerator somebody to cool out kind of when the fights happen and now we've pulled back the curtain too far oh shit <laughs> <laughs> Something in the monitor. I yeah, have something in the monitor. monitor. Dun, 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 dun. It's not gonna cut it. Not for DC. It's let's feedback let's or pump something. It up. Yeah, pump it up. Here we go. Dun, 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 dun. I want a munch. I want a munch. Welcome to Munch Squad. It's a podcast. Within a podcast, thank you to Jade for that theme song. Uh, this is a podcast of the podcast highlighting the latest and greatest in brand eating <laughs> and quick service restaurant innovation, fun ovation, if you will. I uh, will. I have fucking huge news. <laughs> um, does everybody <laughs> does everybody feel kind of bummed out by Hal's? Static, the level of craveable innovation has been. <laughs> Fear not. Fear if not. Answer, if you listen to this show and the answer to that is yes, you're a madman. <laughs> Taco Bell has taken craveable innovation to the next level. I didn't want it to be them. It was, though. Perfect Who else them. would it be? They're, they're delisting the fucking uh, cooler ranch Locos Doritos taco. They can fuck off if they're replacing it with... No, 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 listen. Unless it's two Locos Doritos Cooler Ranch tacos. The, here's the, the subhead for this. Uh, the company gives fans carefree indulgence in this elevated Chalupa experience. Come, my friends. Now, this is a very accurate subhead because if you eat the toasted cheddar Chalupa and someone's like, what are you doing? Your proper response is, I don't fucking care. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I'm literally carefree. <laughs> not about my body, not about my spirit. I, I've never thought about carefree in those terms before. Of like, I used to care, and now I'm, I've given up. Yeah, I'm free of caring. Th that is also the most hedonistic subhead I've ever heard a company yeah, put it its is. name. This Indulge is in our this pleasure. Is Eat the cheese and the beef we have supplied. Live in the moment. You guys are having a lot of fun with the fucking subhead of this press release. <laughs> The beloved Taco Bell Chalupa, the fans know and love, is getting a next level cheesy glow up. Introducing the toasted cheddar Chalupa. Confirmed for nationwide release. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, shit. Hold on. We checked with our scientists. We just checked with ourselves. We are definitely doing this, folks. 
You, I like that. That sounds like a threat. You can't reason with us. We've confirmed it. <laughs> well, we're, we're way past the point of no return on this one. Historically, also, they tested in one market, so it's like, well, we killed Buffalo, but um, at te- least we didn't get the rest of the country. The Tested Cheddar Chalupa presents brilliantly simplistic shell innovation by baking real aged cheddar cheese onto the shell. Since the classic Chalupa was first introduced in 1999, Taco Bell has consistently found new ways to create all new Chalupa experiences. Thank God. (laughs) Whether it's flavor innovation, like the Baja Chalupa in 2000, size innovation with the 2017 launch of the Double Chalupa. Is that an innovation, Taco Bell? (laughs) That is just... That is just a dish. <laughs> or protein innovation with the naked chicken chalupa. That is, that For, is not a... <laughs> that's a munchkin favorite. A protein favorite. innovation, it's a, it's, a ra- it's a fucking whack chicken breast that they fold it into a taco. No, Shut I up. get that, but that's not like we've invented a new protein. That, yeah, we found that, some new protein fossilized in amber. Naked chicken chalupa that same year. The chalupa experience has no boundaries, and that is a threat. <laughs> That is a threat. We are not stopping here, folks. We are nowhere near the fucking Rubicon. At Taco Bell, here's a quote from Liz Matthews, Chief Food Innovation Officer at Taco Bell Corp. At Taco Bell, we get excited by the what ifs. (laughs) It gets us rock hard. It gets us rock hard to excited about the what ifs we can dream up and bring to life for our fans. And it is a a living sentient (laughs) being. And the toasted cheddar chalupa is an example of just that. We know cheese makes everything better, and ba- uh, within limits. And baking aged cheddar into the shell of an already iconic product is a game changer for our fans. Huh. Our fans will love. I don't know what the game is, but yeah. I feel we've all lost already. <laughs> to be fair, baking cheese onto most games is a game changer. Sure, that's a lot harder to play chess, huh? <laughs> hey, I think your I think your copy of Operation is fucked. <laughs> If there's one, th- this thing's 10 paragraphs long. Oh, we got to haul ass. If there's one sure sign of the latest foodie craze, it's a line stretching around the block. That's why Taco... That has nothing to do with fucking anything, Taco Bell. Yeah, it, it would mean something if people were lining up. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> okay, listen, though. If there's one sure sign of the latest foodie line stretching around the block. That's why Taco Bell is giving a few fans the, tra- uh, the chance to try Taco Bell's latest craveable innovation before it's even available nationwide. But because the foodiest hotspots are all the best kept secrets, fans will have to uncover where the advanced tastings of oh toasted my God. cheddar are being served for themselves. Are they doing? They're gonna have to hire Nicolas Cage. <laughs> The, the most wild thing about this, this, this paragraph, and I'm sure there's more wild things about the other paragraphs, but this paragraph specifically, is that, that they are basically saying, like, wouldn't it be weird if we were, like, real food? <laughs> <laughs> it's basically like food face. Like, they're pretending to be food. It's, it's a perversion of what we, we understand food to be. Like, what if Taco Bell was, like, food that you'd buy at a restaurant? Wouldn't that be wild? Also, anyway. the weird kayfabe of re- putting out a press release and saying, but we're not going to tell you, as though they haven't published like a they like, didn't dissertation. Publish, they haven't published locations, though. That's what's Is secret. this the start of a fucking Taco Bell ARG, Justin McElroy? Not, not, uh, is this, do you mean an alternate reality gordita? <laughs> no, it is not. Is, is it I love cheese? And see, there was an ARG called I Love Bees that promoted a Halo. Okay, six of you like that. Um, the toasted cheddar chalupa is not just one of this year's biggest innovations from Taco Bell. It's also the largest international release of a menu item for Taco Bell since the Naked Chicken Chalupa in 2017. Starting this month and for a limited time, the menu item will also be available in Aruba, Canada, Chile, Costa Rica, Dominican Republic, El Salvador, Guatemala, Panama, and Puerto Rico. Uh, after all, the love of cheese is definitely universal. Like the classic chalupa, the toasted cheddar chalupa is filled with the option of seasoned beef, chicken, or steak, and then piled with shredded lettuce. That, these are just the ingredients. What takes the chalupa to foodie-worthy status is all on the outside of the shell. It's the fucking cheese you melted. Like, yeah. Why do these press releases have to tell you six times and then we melted the cheese? We put cheese on it and made it real hot. Taco Bell has taken six-month aged sharp cheddar cheese. Old cheese. Wow. <laughs> there were six... I'm glad cheese ain't sentient. <laughs> Cause there, that means there'll be six months where the cheese is like, 
they must be saving me up for something good. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What is it? William H. Macy's birthday? <laughs> I'm headed for big things, suckers. <laughs> Adios, I'm going to be... Oh, what? <laughs> Outside of a chalupa. What's up? What's up? It's nice to be here. So you're... Uh, your new dirty ground beef. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, it, it's uh, toasted on the iconic chalupa shell to create a crispy blanket of flavor and texture, unlocking a whole new cheese experience. <laughs> that's, that's this uh, week's Munch Squad. Thank you for indulging me. Thank you, Munch Squad. <laughs> I want a mud squad. squad. I want to mud squad. squad. I want to read one headline, um, and it's just Chuck E. Cheese parent names David McKillop's CEO. I just think it's weird that Chuck E. Cheese lets his dad pick who's going to run the company. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Charles F. Cheese, the kingmaker. Uh, so, right, so, okay, so, <laughs> Mr. Peanut died. Yeah, I knew died. It. I fucking knew it. Is this played? Uh, Mr. Peanut died, saving the lives of Matt Walsh and Wesley <laughs> Snipes. So random. It's so random. It's like, I, I saw it, I saw the news, uh, New York Times front page, uh, big font, top of the headline, and I was like, <laughs> fucking random, dude. I saw the news yeah, and I thought, true. good. Eat the he rich, thought, you know? With his I mean, monocle, literally. his top hat. Well, he's also a nut. So you, yeah. could, you could chomp down right on him. But, like, I it's, just, it, it's so... F can I say something, though? Yeah. Is it about how random it is? It's random. We've covered that. Can I say what else? What? It's fucking twisted, dude. Like it that's is their twisted. that's their guy. Like that's their whole guy, and he's been in all the commercials. And they're like, "What are we gonna do for the big game? Let's fucking let's kill Mr. Peanut." It ends with a card that says "Mr. Peanut, 1916 to 2020," because he's 104 years old and he died. Uh -huh. And I just wanted to point out that this is an ad that ran before the Super Bowl. Okay. This press release, one, details exactly what happens in that, in prose, the entirety of that. So we well, didn't see it's, it. They're all in a car. It's the novelization of the commercial, which is a right. new concept. Last year, Mr. Peanut saved friends from snacking disappointment. This year, he's saving lives. The newly released pregame ad shows Mr. Peanut, Matt Walsh, and Wesley Snipes are on a nutty adventure in the Nutmobile where Mr. Peanut is forced to swerve, causing the vehicle to spin out of control. Uh -huh. The trio jumps out of the Nutmobile, clinging onto a tree branch as the vehicle crashes down into a deep canyon below. They momentarily find the safety until their combined weight begins to break the branch. In the ultimate act of friendship, Mr. Peanut lets go and sacrifices himself to save his friends from impending doom. Yeah, he does. So, and then it says you can watch the him die. <laughs> In this video, you can watch them die. And they're going to show that in the pregame. And then the brand's official Super Bowl commercial will air in the third quarter of the game and broadcast Mr. Peanut's funeral. Oh, funny. Funny. <laughs> That's going to so be fucking funny. funny. And then, but then can we just, he is going to smash out of the grave, right? <laughs> I mean, he's got to smash out of the grave with a, a, like I, a new look. Guys, I think he's really fucking dead. I think, I think he's <laughs> fucking toast, dude. I saw him fall down when I saw the car explode, and I think he's really fucking dead, you guys. There's no getting out of this one. That brand mascot is dead as hell. I don't see the him coming back. I think he's fucking dead as shit. The fact that Mr. Peanut fell 100 miles into a huge ravine, and Wesley Snipes didn't say, and me without my jelly, is probably the the biggest comedy tragedy <laughs> of this generation, yeah. or perhaps any any other. Can I? The, <laughs> the, I want to float them in the limit in everyone, everyone's mind of uh, logging into Twitter uh, someday in the morning <laughs> and seeing the breaking news that uh, actor comedian Matt Walsh has died saving Wesley's lives <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Peanut in a car accident. Well, no, no, because it'll be it'll be Mr. Peanut and then uh, then Matt Walsh and then Wesley Snipes will have won the Tontine and he'll get all oh, the money. Okay, see, so yes. <sighs> So it's going to be a really funny funeral for this beloved peanut who 
has lived longer than pretty much anybody on earth and then we killed him because that's what we do um i wanted to did you hear about his family at the lake they got smashed what does that mean because they're peanuts smashed peanuts like that great treat smashed because they they get turned into peanut butter okay that you're nothing Air smashed into peanut butter. <laughs> Fancy. No, hold up. Wait. Cool... Travis started doing like a Mr. Evil impression accent. <laughs> and that's when it was getting good for me. So, Trav, again, smashed, but as, but as Mr. Evil. Peanut butter. I love it. Um, Say something else as some... Mr. Evil. <laughs> Justin, shut the fuck up. One million dollars. <laughs> In addition to mourning Mr. Peanut during his funeral, Fans have several ways to celebrate his life, including fans who spot the Nutmobile leading up to and on game day will receive a commemorative pin celebrating Mr. Peanut's life. Hey, y'all, I know that motherfucker's dead. If I see the Nutmobile <laughs> driving around, I'm going to freak. Also, I'm if I get a pin out. and then find out he's not dead, I'm going to feel like a real dead. asshole. Mr. Peanut enthusiasts can show their family and friends how much the legume meant to Finally. them. Finally. My shit by sharing the black crying monocle and their favorite memory on social using hashtag re peanut i feel like they're not taking this they're not taking this seriously peanut. they're like making a big fucking joke out of it a man has died yeah a man has well, died and he may be a pe- peanut butter man and but i mean just because he was a peanut doesn't mean his memory needs to be assaulted um the ad was produced by was that another peanut matter. joke no sir Okay, I, who do you wish had died in that three? In that three, I mean, Mr. fuck Pete. Mary Kill. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say though, I am really glad they were filming when the car crash happened. Because if he had just died, like if he had just died, if he had had a heart attack and just died, and then we see it in the news, they like smell rotten peanut coming from his hotel room or something. Like five days later, like that would have been sad. But at least they were recording. Yeah, they got, a, they got a commercial out of it. They recorded it when he died and exploded. So now I feel like I get a chance to say goodbye. Um, so. I just want to say that there's no combination of the three of them in which I don't <laughs> end up choosing Mr. Peanut for kill. Yeah, because the he's and the reason for that is that he doesn't have flesh and bone and blood and Correct. brain and organs and cells and nerves. Um, brand Twitter fucking jizzed all over itself <laughs> trying to get a slice of this one everybody's <laughs> tweeting about this this tale um i think the most hypocritical one is um snickers who said we too would sacrifice it all for the nut hashtag r.i peanut and hey, hey fucking snickers you've been burying his brethren for decades in in people's maws i don't know where you get off being indignant about the loss of one peanut when you've been absolutely murdering them for ages i think Peter said Peter said that uh nuts have been a great source of protein for a long time Whoa. so thank you shut Mr. the peanut. fuck up you can't even we're trying to have fun over here with this dead ass nut and you come in here like well let me tell you about the body science so Uno, the brand Uno of the game, uh-huh. you know the game Uno? So that brand replied to the other brand, which is now, I will give it up, the Twitter the Twitter name of Mr. Peanut has changed to the estate of Mr. Yeah, Peanut. Yeah, that, that does rule. That, <laughs> that is extremely good. Prop, uh, 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 I will give you proper respect for that. Uno uh, replied to the tweet, what? No, we're dropping a reverse card on this. Whoa. Hashtag R.I.P. No. Nut. Hey, Uno, can I talk to you over here for a second? Um, it's 2020. If you have had the ability to drop reverse cards <laughs> on events of the world, where- <laughs> I do not know why you've been on the fucking bench until now. I can't believe this is what gets you in the fucking game, you know? This is what, you must have just drawn it, I hope, because if you have had this ability this entire time, and this is where you I mean, say, this far, no far. No, listen, guys, we only have enough chrono silk to operate the time loom once. <laughs> So we, uh, and we've been waiting. I think Mr. Peanut's the one we got to burn it on. If you already got the reverse card going, if you could just let it run for a few years, I would love another second, another pass at this. Uh, oh. Very well, very well done, Peanut Company. Do, 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 do
I want a munch. Squad. I want a munch. Squad. Pizza Hut will reward first set of twins born after Super Bowl. What? How? Why? Pizza Hut's going for two. <laughs> And hoping a couple lucky parents can convert on Super Bowl Sunday. Oh boy. They mean give birth to human life. The the pizza restaurant returns to Super Bowl Live for its second year as the official pizza sponsor of the NFL on February 2nd. This year, the family that welcomes the first set of twins born after kickoff is going to get amazing prizes. Oh, boy. The press release goes on to say that family has always been part of Pizza Hut's DNA, which is why the restaurant will honor the MVPs making their own special deliveries this Sunday. The winning family will get a trip for two to next year's Super Bowl LV. Mm -hmm. Two years of free pizza and in honor of its ongoing commitment to literacy through its iconic Book It program, will also reward $22,000 to kick off the Twins' education funds, along with a custom curated starter library and a handbook and picked by the Book It team. So Pizza Hut's book experts will pick books to send to your children. Now, one thing that I find engaging about this is that the people they have chosen to fly somewhere to a football game for two, they know for a motherfucking <laughs> fact, have two 12 month olds almost to the day. <laughs> right. Extremely close to that. So there is, I would say, a thin chance <laughs> of the parents cashing this in. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's kind of a foolproof, foolproof system they've worked in. The two years of pizza, they'll be gaga about. No question about it. The 22 I just large. Don't f- that's all right. That's damn for decent sure. Of These people are not going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> They're not going to do it. They're just not going to do it. Who better to help Pizza Hut welcome the first set of twins on the biggest day in football than Super Bowl Lee champs and identical twins Devin and Jason McCordy? Uh, we know parents don't get an off season, so what? The twins and parents oh. are. You heard me. <laughs> Sorry, bud. Shit, man. As twins and parents ourselves, we're pumped to help honor. <laughs> Wait, what's we're that? Pumped. We can't win? Shit. Aw, oh, beans. Shit. Dang. We're pumped to help honor one lucky family welcoming twins on Super Bowl Sunday. We have awesome family memories with Pizza Hut growing up. And from the beginning... <laughs> <laughs> Treasured Pizza Hut man. Our dad Pizza Hut would take us fishing. Uh, we've always been passionate about food, family, and football. Those last two make sense, but what's the first one have to do with Pizza Hut? <laughs> it feels great to be a part of Super Bowl campaign that spotlights all three. So here's what you got to do. Parents with twins born during the game simply need to post a photo to Twitter of their new baby, oh including exact times of birth with a hashtag PHT win to win and hashtag promotion and tag at Pizza Hut oh to be included for consideration. There is, I can't express the, there will be people yes. who will spin. Mm-hmm. Among the first moments of their child's life, at least a few seconds, they will steal to stare at their phones to tweet. <laughs> Hurry, a Doc, photo Doc, give me that baby. To pizza give me that baby. Don't wash it off. Just, I, there's no time. Oh, there's no we time. Gotta you the- gotta be first. <laughs> Honey, pl- there will be people who will have th- some permutation of this fucking conversation. Honey, please keep the babies in. Uh-huh for just another moment so i can tweet a picture of them to pizza hut after the game kicks off please i I beg of you i gotta wait until i see that beautiful hog sack flying through the sky (laughs) to indicate that football has begun and then oh babe you're screaming so loud i know it's not good 
Once that big, beautiful ball arcs through the air, then the baby can crown and our life together can begin with this child. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to tweet a picture of our (laughs) infant to Pizza Hut. Don't forget the hashtags, honey. Both of them. Oh, boy. Fuck. Fuck, The least they could have done. (laughs) The least Pizza Hut could have done is told us about this contest last April. Yes. So that willing couples can mark it to the day, early May, pork down, drink whatever kind of tea you need to drink in order to make two of them happen, and try to aim your shot then. You know what I mean? Because yeah. there's a lot of people who are like, well, oh, shit, my baby's due in like December. Ah, shit, my baby, my baby's not due until April. That sucks. Tell me last April so I can take a fucking, so I can line up my shot and throw that dart and see what happens. Can I tell you boys something? We're missing a huge thing here, which is, I don't know about you guys, but baby dot was a scheduled C-section. There is 1,000% some parents out there going, would you happen to have any slots on Sunday? It's so grisly. Oh, I can't. I'm watching the big game. Ah, shit. All the doctors are watching the big game. Yeah, but if you tried to schedule it during the big game, the doctor would probably tell you, no, thank you. I'll be enjoying the big game. Mm-hmm. You can't schedule it. You have to trick me into coming with a series of riddles <laughs> that lead me to the hospital. Hey, and then and only then. What's doctor, that? You're throwing hey, a party at this address? And I just need to show up? Oh, qu- <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a second. There's an OR here. Um, Not expecting twins? No worries. There's still a chance to be a winner. See if you can find another baby that looks just like your baby. Uh, uh, I, I, I would argue that by not expecting twins, I am feeling pretty much like a winner already. Thank you very much, Pizza Hut. I don't need you to prop me up. But no worries. I will still have worries, Pizza Hut. Thank you. Keep an eye on the Pizza Hut Twitter handle throughout the game on Super Bowl Sunday for a chance to win great prizes. We'll be giving away two babies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep an eye on. Did you mean to say keep an eye on this fucking hashtag to see the adults that tweet a picture of their twins to Pizza Hut? Because I am going to be doing that yeah, for sure. sure. Hey, uh, just real quick, just check it in, Pizza Hut. What if it's triplets, but I only take pictures with two of the babies? Mmm. It's not called going for three. It's not their field goal challenge. Damn it. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, thank what? God. Dun, 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 dun. Right Toronto! Okay. I want a munch. Squad. Squad. I want to munch. Squad. Right down the middle. I'm standing up. Whoa. Right down the middle. This is one that's usually here, and now it's here again. Munch Squad, this is a little late, so we may have missed this promotion, folks, but I'm sure plenty of you took advantage of it. Boston Market selling baby back rib bouquets for $29.99. Whoa. Holy shit. Yeah, I think we missed it. I don't think they're going to I don't, show that I don't think they're going to do it on Easter. Show that. No, then they just sell crucifixes. It's two ribs. It's two. And a cr- crucifix. Same price. Ribs. Same price, still $30. It's all about the experience. It's experiential eating <laughs> at Boston Market. Hey, we're kind of taking kind of an avant-garde approach to what it means to be Boston Market. <laughs> Boston Market is bidding farewell to flowers and shall to chocolates this Valentine's Day with a new one-of-a-kind gift, a romantic bouquet made of its newest menu offering, fall off the bone baby back ribs that term has never sounded good to me i Mm -hmm. i I need it to be on the bone at least until it reaches the mouth quadrant well sir and certainly if your plan is to deliver a bouquet of them to your lover (laughs) you would want them to stick to maybe maybe they're stick to your ribs ribs with a pile of meat on their (laughs) floor and a bunch of bones. <laughs> hey, this Valentine's Day, how about a dozen fall off the stem roses? <laughs> yeah. Right. It's it's uh, beautifully assembled with one dozen tender Boston Market baby back ribs. <sighs> the limited edition and sure to be coveted fucking 
pull up an imaginary <laughs> stool <laughs> and then get a seat belt on your imaginary stool and strap yourself into it because this is about to blast you right out of the water. Are you ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> the sure to be coveted Bay B A E B back ribs bouquet. Holy the shit. Bay Fuck. Ah, B back ribs bouquet. Ah. Will be available for purchase on Friday, February 14th in all Barston Market restaurants nationwide <laughs> while supplies last for $29.99. Hey, fuck, it's one day. So there are people, other humans, you know, like us people on Earth uh -huh. that had to spend their life minutes learning how to make a tasteful rib bouquet <sighs> for this fucking punchline of a promotion that lasts one day. Hey, Justin, can I just dip in real quick for a second? to touch on that thought because you when you say uh be like beautifully arranged tastefully arranged the 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 idea to execution gap that exists there for me is insurmountable i'm going to take okay. these dozen bones with meat and drippings on them right and arrange mm -hmm. them so that a human being would look upon them with their eye jellies and say Beautiful. Well done. Beautiful. Well arranged. These have certainly been touched more than the usual rib. <laughs> I'm crazy about them. And even more so that then another human being with their eye jellies would look at the new human being holding this and say, I wish I had that. And imagine, imagine the light in your lover's eyes and the shame in yours when you admit to them it costs $30 <laughs> for this fucking punchline. When we first toyed with the idea of adding baby back ribs to our menu. Wait, wait, wait. We we they don't even normally do baby back ribs. It's a newer offering. Uh, when we first toyed also, with the I idea love of the adding... phrase toyed with the idea of like, mm, how playful. Hey, guys, wouldn't it? Hey, I just want to put the tiger on the table and fucking just yell at it. Wouldn't it be what so baby funny? Back ribs? <laughs> so cute and sweet. Oh, my God. Baby back ribs to our menu. We knew we wanted to focus on flavor and quality, <laughs> says Chef Tony Fialho. Director of Culinary Innovation at Boston Market. That's why we had to put him in a fucking crazy shape. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing says quality like pretending like baby back ribs or flowers to try to sell them. Uh, that's why we're slow cooking our ribs to fall off the bone perfection again <laughs> before smothering them in sweet baby Ray's famous hickory barbecue sauce. We just launched baby back ribs a few weeks ago and our guests are loving them. On their own, our baby back ribs are sure to delight barbecue enthusiasts everywhere. But when packaged in a delectable bouquet, mm -hmm. they're the picture-perfect Valentine's Day gift to help anyone delight and feed that special someone. That, that is the one of the things is you have to sit there and watch your lover consume the entire bouquet. That is it's part of the gift. Boston Market is also inviting guests to celebrate their bay <laughs> over a shared plate of baby back ribs making it the perfect date night spot for some Valentine's Day loving. Oh my God, wait, what? read that last sentence again, but slower <laughs> and deeper. The Boston Market is inviting guests to celebrate their bay over a shared plate of baby back ribs, making it the perfect date night spot for some Valentine's Day loving. Yes, friends, Boston Market is encouraging you to fuck in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> Eat some cornbread and fucking the booth. You know, I'm never am I most ready for sexual intercourse than after consuming a bunch of ribs and bread. <laughs> in public. <laughs> in public. <laughs> at a Boston market. For $30. <laughs> On February 14th, pork isn't the only pork at Boston market. It's a double entendre. Uh, on February 14th, couples can enjoy a romantic dinner for two. Mm-hmm. Featuring two half orders of ribs, two sides per person, and two pieces of cornbread for only $20, with a coupon available online at Boston Market. So you're telling me yeah. I can get a dozen ribs, plus extras, plus some bonuses, and then arrange them myself mm -hmm. and save a 10 spot, is what you're telling me. Yeah, I don't know how much you're in the portion. 10! See, the half rack is like, it's got to be more ribs for 20, but they're, they're up charging you 
the upcharge, although you know what? This is the $10 question. How do you arrange these ribs? They well, that's you. a great question, Griffin. I'm going to share with you an image. Oh, cool. Of what it looked like. Uh, and it is uh, troubling. And this is a promotional image. It should, uh, I'm sharing it in Slack now. Uh, it should be noted that this is not an image of like someone at home got this. or This is what it looked like in sure. their perfect... I wish I'm going to need to tweet this one out because the way these ribs descend to the stem uh -huh. does not it make sense. It can't possibly be it can't anything. Be. It also kind of looks for be. this promotional image like they took kind of like big hunks of like wet newspaper and dipped it in mm -hmm. like mud and chocolate and said mm -hmm. delicious. This isn't this next part isn't germane to the story but it is they've thrown it in here. Boston Market fans can also spread the love even further when enjoying the new Baby Back Ribs or any of their other favorites thanks to the recently launched Rotisserie Rewards Program. <laughs> the loyalty program available via the new Boston Market mobile app for iOS and Android online at bostonmarket.com or in restaurants. Are you doing that intentionally? What? The, El the Ellen Barkin Restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> BostonMarket.com or in restaurant allows customers to earn one point for every dollar they spend in restaurant or online. C can, can you guys, can you guys imagine what it would be like to order your food at Boston Market and then say, hold on a second. I'm a member of the Rotisserie Rewards Program, and I want to make sure I'm credited the points for these ribs I'm buying. I'm not eating these ribs for my enjoyment. This is a right. this is work to me. I need you these. You probably points. recognize me. I'm I'm part of the club. Um. So anyway, Boston Market is making a truly delectable uh, Valentine's Day mistake. I'm sorry we missed it. I'm sorry we couldn't get out there and. Uh, warn people about it ahead of time, but. This show used to be about something. Welcome to Munch Squad. It's a podcast within a podcast. Within a podcast. Profiling the latest and greatest in brand eating. Today I have exciting news for you about Kentucky Fried Chicken. Some and, of you are from Kentucky. And Crocs. So KFC and Crocs made shoes. It could have gone either way. KFC and Crocs debut bucket clogs and New York's biggest week in fashion. A word that used to have meaning, but now is just a collection of syllables. <laughs> Kentucky bucket clogs sounds like a terrible bathroom mistake. <laughs> yeah. Kentucky Fried Chicken, purveyor of world famous fried chicken. Oh, is that what they do? Has partnered with Crocs. I do like, though, that it didn't say, like, super good fried <laughs> chicken. <laughs> yeah. It's like world famous. People well know known. it. Yeah. The creators of the world's most delightfully comfortable shoes. To introduce this spring's hottest shoes, Kentucky Fried Chicken Cross Crocs Clogs. Oh, right off the tongue and into a toilet. I'm going, this is the moment I will describe the shoes for you. They are Crocs. Uh -huh. The bottom of them is red and white. Then they have pictures of chicken on them. And then they have two little chicken wings on top. I have not exaggerated this. I will enhance the image as much as I can for you here in the, in the theater. And then you can enjoy this picture of the shoes. Show me these, show me these bad boys. Show this is what they are. They are shoes of the chicken. Yeah, that looks a lot like you are wearing some fucking chicken right on your feet that you walk on. Right, yes. Oh. 
Thank you, Yum Brands. Uh, so here's the deal on these motherfuckers. KFC and Crocs partnered to make two versions of the limited edition chicken Crocs. The first, Kentucky Fried Chicken Cross Crocs Bucket Clog, is a sky-high platform avant-garde version that gl <laughs> global artist me love me a lot MLMA. What the fuck does global artist? Can we <laughs> can we fucking calm down? Debuted while attending shows during New York's biggest week in fashion on February 11th. I'm assuming Fashion Week is trademarked. The second, Kentucky Fried Chicken Cross Crocs Classic Clog, a classic clog version, fucking fuck, will, will be available for good news, dumb shits, consumer purchase in spring of 2020. Quote, Combining the unmistakable look of our world-famous fried chicken and signature KFC bucket with the unparalleled comfort and style of Crocs. These shoes are what fried chicken footwear dreams are made of. Said what? Andrea Zaholonski, she's the KFC US CMO. <sighs> okay, wait. So Andrea said that sentence. Here's the sentence I want to say with some of my seconds on earth. These are the shoes that fried chicken footwear dreams are made of. If you've had those, you should see a doctor, obviously. That's, those are not the dreams of a healthy mind. They and feature a realistic Kentucky Fried Chicken pattern because there's nothing worse than people looking at your shoes and saying, that chicken's not real. <laughs> and a nod to the iconic red stripe bucket. They're sure to fulfill all your finger-licking fashion dreams. And they're also the number one shoes to be arrested in for forging driver's lessons. <laughs> if you want to be arrested and dragged from your home in front of all your neighbors for forging driver's license, these are the shoes to do it in. <laughs> Don't forget the sides. This clog also comes with, I'm not fucking with you. The clog comes with two removable chicken scented gibbets charms. Chicken, I need you to say those words again, but I need you to say them one at a time, sort of explaining their relevance to one another. Too removable, and that's probably where you tripped up, because who the fuck would want to take the chicken legs off their shoes? Who the fuck would want their shoes to smell like chicken all the time? Hey, good news, local dogs, I've got someone to hump. And you're going to very much enjoy it, local dogs. This tasty collaboration of American icons a word that used to mean something and it is now just a loose collaboration of syllables, <laughs> right. is truly an original recipe for success. <laughs> Fucking success by what metric? As Crocs continues to create new, unexpected, actually, no. Saw this one coming. <laughs> Brand clap. You are the people that made a bucket of food and called it a meal and put a bunch of gravy and mashed potato and garbage in a bowl and we're like, it's lunch. It's not. You're partnering with Crocs makes perfect sense. It's an unexpected brand collaboration. We're thrilled with this bucket list partnership because you wear them before you die with Kentucky Fried Chicken that will bring fans an unbelievably fun and fashionable take on our classic clog, says Terrence Riley. Crocs person that used to have hopes and dreams, I assume. <laughs> it that used probably to be, felt love at some point. It used to be about the shoes, man. <laughs> we're, we're honored <laughs> <laughs> to feature this fashion forward style between two iconic American brands at one of New York's biggest weeks in fashion. I feel like I've been stuck in a 30 second loop for about seven minutes now. <laughs> If nothing else, I mean, I'm impressed by how many different ways they found to say how excited they are about these stinky chicken shoes. <laughs> yeah. um, fa fans can sign up on crocs.com to be the first to receive a reminder <laughs> when the limited edition fried chicken footwear is available for sale this spring. Got it. Those lucky enough to score a pair once available will be killed on sight. <laughs> will be called. Those looking at a score pair will be the first with their backs against the wall when the revolution comes. 
<laughs> what if the next, the next PR release on quick service restaurants is Popeyes lets loose a bunch of mountain lions. Better <laughs> run, chicken crocs wearers. Um, they, and those lucky enough to score a pair once available can share how they're styling their hashtag KFC Crocs by tagging Crocs and KFC on social just in case you want to spread the message that you're a real dummy to a wider audience that is available to you right now on social media. That said, would indeed buy a pair probably for the fun of it. Yeah, um, I want all of you tonight. That's when you leave and you tweet about this show about how great it was. Just go ahead and use that hashtag KFC Crocs. <laughs> hashtag KFC Crocs. Let's get it trending. Let's anyway. see if we can get that up there. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode of Munch Squad, a podcast within a podcast. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Um, I um, love nature too. Yeah. yeah, we're very smart about them. Da, 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 da. Okay. Huh. Da, 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 da. Oh. I want a munch squad. I want to munch squad. I'm sorry, I got a cold and I realized it sounded weird. Yeah. Like Alfred E. Newman I kind of loved something. it. I kind of enjoyed it too. I got a munch squad mini and then a full munch squad for you. I got combo. Duncan adds snack and bacon to the menu. <laughs> what? Please tell me they used apostrophes in there. Oh, yeah, they did. <laughs> Duncan, snacking, bacon. Is bacon apostrophized what is it? too? No, bacon's not. That'd be wild, though. I, I They missed the trick, huh? <laughs> yeah, so Duncan adds snack and bacon to the menu. This one's bacon in a little bag, my friends. Oh. Uh, it's just... <laughs> Bacon in a little stinky, <laughs> greasy bag. I'm glad it's not just loose bacon, though. That is better. The, it is basically loose bacon, Travis. It's as close to loose bacon as you can get without being loose without bacon. Without going to prison. <laughs> yeah. Here's how it starts. Sack the sad snacks with the new snack and bacon. Oh, God. For anyone who's seeing a satisfying snack, seeking a satisfying snack, but it's, this one seems designed to fuck me up. I see you, We Duncan. got him. For, for anyone who's seeking a satisfying snack but is stuck with a sad selection at their desk, office, kitchen, or vending machine, Duncan is adding some extra sizzle to its menu. Hey, friends, if there is a sadder snack than bacon from a greasy little bag that you bought at the store and carried to your office, I don't know what it is. Duncan Wednesday unveiled new snack and bacon mm -hmm. and s with sweet black pepper seasoning. To help on the go customers conquer nothing. It's not help. Help is the wildest world word you could have picked. You're not helping them to do anything. They say they're helping their customers conquer their cravings without settling for tired and typical snacking choices. Hey Roger, what are you what are you snacking on out of that bag there? Bacon. <laughs> Just uh some bacon, bacon in a bag. Huh, Roger? Are you okay? Hey Roger. Yeah, the it's a, the only sad, the only thing that you have to imagine with this is is actually walking up to the counter and they're like, "What food do you want here at Dunkin' that you've gone into willingly?" And the person says, "Um, I want a bag of snack and bacon for the road." I I actually think saying for here would be worse. That would actually I'm gonna sit in the <laughs> corner and listen to a podcast. Here's the full one. Einstein Brothers is going to launch a bagel and burrito mashup. Huh. Is it, is it, are they just going to jam it in the fucking hole? <laughs> Basically. They announced, uh, it, Einstein Brothers announced it's launching a first of its kind bagel innovation. The bagel Rito. <sighs> a bagel and burrito mashup. The bagel Rito was available at five test locations in the Denver area for a limited time in October 29th. And it's going to shock you all, but it fucking cleaned up. <laughs> <laughs> it's sold out within hours of its announcement to the world. Why did you announce it to the world? Let Denver get a fucking crack at that beautiful bastard. <laughs> Due to the wild success of the test launch and countless requests from guests who wish they could try the bagel Rito. Valerie, how many requests have we got about the bagel Rito? I can't count them. There's too many. They're pouring in. They're throwing them through the window. The bagel is broken. It's, it's like it's exploded everywhere. Can't count that high. It's like the end of Miracle on 34th Street in here. 
Why did we set up a complex system of pneumatic tubes from every Einstein Brothers location into our home base? So the Einstein Brothers Bagels is making the game-changing breakfast item available to guests across the U.S. at participating locations. And f the tone of this announcement is that they think they're ready for bagel Ritos, but they're not fucking sure. Okay, they're on the they're on the the very edge. Quote: We heard our guests loud and clear. Says Taka O'Rourke, VP of Marketing for Einstein Brothers Bagels. They always have to clarify what company they're the VP of marketing of. It'd be wild if the VP of marketing at Ford is like, they got nasty new bagels. <laughs> <laughs> this place got nasty new bagels. <laughs> <laughs> Cars are still cool, but check out these nasty bagel tubes. Given the popularity of the bagel Rito during the Denver test, we knew we couldn't keep this breakfast innovation from the rest of the country for too long. We just needed a bit of time to ensure our bakeries are set up to meet the volume of orders we're expecting. On February 27th, we will be ready. Constantly pushing the boundaries of the classic bagel. Einstein Brothers Bagel has taken it to the next level with the bagel. Has Rito. taken it too far. <laughs> too far. They've, they've crossed the Rubicon and made a shame before God. It's loaded with two cage free eggs th for that, for, you know, you know, for that animal <laughs> cruelty conscious consumer that also wants to eat a bagel shaped like a fucking tube. And it's got thick cut bacon from, I'm assuming, inhumanely raised pigs. <laughs> they make the pigs. And turkey sausage. Let's get them all in there. <laughs> they make the pigs watch the chickens run around come back here cow you don't get out we need three cheeses from you and potatoes your non-sentient state will not preserve you there's hash browns in this bad boy and salsa and green chilies and a flour tortilla all hand wrapped in an asiago bagel dough and baked fresh and what a relief that machines aren't involved in this process i'm glad humans have to use some of their time here on this big blue globe to roll these bagel tubes for me it's substantial Financial size, high flavor, and portability has earned High flavor it is a good high term. Flavor I like good. high flavor. The high flavor and portability. Folks. Thank God. Bagels I, have been so cumbersome up till now. <laughs> and burritos too. Yeah. Yeah, friends, I'm here to ask you, what is the last item that you bought at a fast food place where you're like, well, I can't take this anywhere. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this heavy. I can't carry. What am I to carry it to another location? Uh, the high flavor and portability has earned it its slogan. Big, bold, and easy to hold. Oh, boy. Who are these people <laughs> that have a regular bagel? And they're like, whoop, drop the damn thing. <laughs> oh, fuck. Now it's rolling Again? away. Again? Again? And hey, hey, friends, I'm looking at this thing. It's a big, loose tube full of garbage. <laughs> this is not a portable solution. Just as close at the bottom, you're going to have bagel juice slipping out. Anyway, that's the bagel Rito. Looks pretty good. I would probably eat yeah. one, and it's available at Einstein Brothers now. Next time I'm out to eat a restaurant, I'm just going to silently open up the salt shaker and dump it all over my meal. And then when Rachel asks, like, hey, what are you doing? I can now confidently answer, I am turning the flavor to high. The flavor, <laughs> the flavor is not at high right now. I need maximum flavor. It's what I deserve as a consumer. Yep. I deserve no less. We rarely go out. It's hard to find a babysitter. <laughs> what I am deserve, I going to eat? Regular I, flavor? I deserve high flavor. Uh, well, we'll get out of your hair now. Once again, MaximumFun.org. <laughs> that sounds join. like we're, like, backing out the door, and we've been trying to sell Ooh. you some brushes and combs. All right, well, uh, you've been a gracious host. Uh, <laughs> MaximumFun.org slash join. Thank you so much, and thank you to, uh, John Roderick in the Long Winters for the use of our theme song. It's a departure off the album, putting the days to bed. Um, and we're about to put this episode to bed, because, uh, uh, Fish and Friends go bad after three days, right, guys? Uh, <laughs> I don't. What is that? Are we fish? Griffin, do you have a final Yahoo? We're friends. Uh, I guess I could try to get the world of Boss Baby going. Okay. You seem to know uh, people, Justin. I don't know how you're all connected, but. Hello. But I thought you said. I want a munch. Squad.
Okay. You know, there's still got to be one up in the mix. Come on, they're not stopping. All of the others will be turned, but rising is still Taco Bell. Okay, now it's See, now I, week. Okay. I had my suspicions <laughs> when Justin had his Freudian <laughs> slip of the tongue that perhaps yeah. might be a much Taco Bell on the time open, ready to pull the trigger right. on it, and I just went too soon. Taco Bell, and I, let me, I want to frame this for you all um, before I get into the press release. I think that we're going to be talking about the longest shell ever with the triple lupa. Huh. The ultimate reinvention of the fan favorite <laughs> chalupa. It's the triple lupa. And I want, I want, I guess what I'm thinking is there had to be someone at Taco Bell in the past couple weeks, as bad as things have been, I will tell you that there's so much Taco Bell in the past couple weeks that at some point has had the thought, man, now nobody's going to talk about the triple lupa. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Three shells. Three flavors. Huh. The triple lupa triples the flavor and doubles the beef in Taco Bell's first tear apart menu item. Tear apart, tear what? apart menu item. Tear, tear apart. Yep, I, tear apart. I would argue. Menu item. I would argue any yes. any item at Taco Bell is tear apart if you want it. If you believe. If you need it. Yeah. Taco Bell is no stranger to giving fans more of what they love, and now the latest reinvention of the iconic chalupa gives fans three times the reason to get excited. Launching for a limited time in participating restaurants nationwide on March 12th. The tr <laughs> That's tough. The Triple Lupa serves as a hands-on experience with three mini Chalupas featuring three flavors and double the seasoned beef compared to the regular Chalupa. Combining three mini Chalupas to create the longest shell in Taco Bell history, the Triple Lupa marks Taco Bell's first ever tear apart menu item. It takes all the elements of the Chalupa to the next level with different flavors in each of the mini shells. Nacho, sh do you see how they've become mini shells mm -hmm. solely, by the, <laughs> solely by the fact that there's three of them <laughs> joined together? Now they're mini it's shells. Like they've made a, it's bite size. It's like they've made a flight of Chalupas, but it's a, like a concentric flight. There's nacho cheese on one end, chipotle on the other, and a combination of the two, cheesy chipotle in the third. Okay, fuck that's off. That's not three flavors. That's, that's not three flavors. That's a messy spot in the middle where you can't separate the two. Justin, can I ask you a question? Yeah, I'm Trav, not, is it about the triple loop? Because it's all I it care is. about. I'm not as in touch with the quick service industry as you are. Was there ever a double lupa, or did they just skip straight from single lupa to triple lupa? Because if so, I feel like they have missed a very a important milestone here. There's a market there for the double lupa, for those of us who are scared of the triple lupa. Yes. If we can find a way to fill that niche, fill the South Park niche, we're going to be in the, the money. The double lupa is not on sale right now, but it is, it's just called the double chalupa. Okay, so it's two. It's it's a d double wide, basically. Yeah, if they double, it, but that's they, not the same. If they were gonna skip ahead, they should have just gone straight to the quadrupa. Oh, uh, well, that's just two of those squished together by a very strong man. That's a good point. Um, the tri uh, uh, Okay, so the the triple loop. Getting back into the the mix here. Uh. <clears throat> Since the introduction in 1999, the beloved menu item has continuously transformed in shape, form, and ingredients to become the most reinvented Taco Bell menu item of all time. Weird brag. <laughs> we I just can't say. seem to get this fucking thing right. <laughs> all our fans agree. We can't get this one right. <laughs> <laughs> From flavor innovation like the Baja Chalupa in 2000. Which wasn't, to which size, wasn't it. We know it wasn't, wasn't it. it. <laughs> we know we missed on that one. Don't don't to, tweet at us anymore, please. To size innovation with the double Chalupa in 2017. What were we thinking? We're so close. <laughs> we blew it. <laughs> Quote, at Taco Bell, we recognize and love the fandom that the Chalupa has cultivated <laughs> over the years. <laughs> A fandom that is devoted to a, essentially a concept, really, a, a brand name, really, because uh, this thing has been reinvented so many times. But it's why we want to bring to our me fans. Implies in. they're out there, like people out there, like doing cosplay and writing like right. fan fiction about the it's a fan favorite. 
probably there is. Um, and it's an all new flavor and shell experience <laughs> with the triple lupa. That's from Kristen Fudelan, associate manager of research and development at Taco Bell and lead product developer behind the triple lupa. The triple lupa's nationwide launch gives us the opportunity to celebrate the transformation of this beloved menu item. And we can't wait for everyone to taste this latest innovation. <sighs> For the Triple Lupa's nationwide debut. I, I want to thank Taco Bell, honestly. Kidding aside. I haven't thought about anything but the Triple Lupa for the past, like, three minutes, and it's been pretty incredible. And this, and it's, this one is so long, and there's no way they could have known. And they made such a long press release for this. Thank you. For the Triple Lupa's nationwide debut, Taco Bell is partnering with a brand known for serving up its own reinventions. Guess. Right now, both of you guess. Oh, my God. Um, uh, a segue. <laughs> Is that a, a segue? Travis? Just an invention? Like oh, wait, Tesla. I take it back, Tesla. Well, it's TikTok. Oh. The short form mobile video platform serves as the framework for the Triple Lupa's national TV spot and is the first time TikTok has partnered with a brand on a national advertising campaign. Shot in TikTok's full screen vertical video format, the ad spot follows the creative, unexpected, and joyful content the TikTok community is celebrated for which I would assume is much less triple loop of focus now than it would have been two weeks ago. When I look back at our history with social trends, I'm proud of the fact that we are always leading the industry and pushing boundaries. Whether it's being the first on new platforms or breaking records on others, Taco Bell is constantly at the forefront of online trends, said Tracy LaRocca, senior VP of brand engagement at Taco Bell, who must have a very confusing job at the moment. <laughs> the most... <laughs> The most natural step for us would be to partner with a brand like TikTok. Mm -hmm. Yep. The most natural step for our taco store mm -hmm. <laughs> would be to part. How? Where? Where did it go? How did it get to here? Where the most natural step for our taco store is to partner with this small Jesus, video. Justin, because I, we can't say that exact sentence that you just said out loud about how did we get to here because it invites you to open up a door into a pitch black abyss that I got. I yeah. actually got vertigo from he, like thinking about it and I had to close the door. I can tell you exactly how it happened. Are you ready for this? It happened like this. Yeah. Picture like a conference room, table full of execs, some young, some not so young. One of them playing on his phone it's bradley he never pays attention during these meetings and mr bell uh, who is of course the owner of taco bell says bradley what do you think and bradley without thinking just looks like goes TikTok, and that's how it was born that's how most business happens yeah because of fucking bradley and his because of fucking bradley and his malfeasance and then bradley said tick taco and everyone lost their shit i mean that's probably it yeah yeah um Oh my God! I'm looking at a triple looper right now. Taco Bell was tweeting about this. Stuff. The brand is encouraging fans to jump in on the fun huh. by participating in an upcoming Taco Bell hashtag challenge on TikTok, and plans to announce more details about the challenge in the coming weeks. I doubt it. Taco Bell will also be partnering with select TikTok creators to inspire fans to reinvent something themselves and share it on the platform. Um, so yeah, that one hasn't gotten, I'm looking at Twitter and that one hasn't gotten a lot of the traction you would sort of hope for, uh, on that, on that one. I, that one hasn't gotten uh, a lot of heat. I the tell best you, laid plans, huh? I'm looking at, yeah, I'm looking yeah. at this wild taco caterpillar that they have put together for me. And the only, the yeah. only one of these that I'm interested in is the, 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 the like the liminal lupa. The like centralized sort of middle of the Venn diagram. Give me that one. I want a service that will rip the the liminal lupa out of the middle of this caterpillar and mail it to my house. Now, what <sighs> if what if I get one of these and mm -hmm. I got two friends, and one of the friends is like, I want cheesy, and the other friend said, I want Chipotle. But here's the thing, guys, I wanted Chipotle. I didn't want cheese. Now I'm stuck in the middle. With the, are we each supposed to get our own? I think you spend as long as you can arguing about that and then find another vine to swing to. Yeah, you just enjoy each other's mm -hmm. company for the brief moment you have? I wouldn't call that enjoying company. Having a taco fight, Travis, is not enjoyable company. I'll tell you, Griffin, right now, 
I would love to have a taco fight You'd with love any to have human a taco being. Fight, huh? Yes, that wasn't that wasn't my wife and kid. I love my wife and kids, but we've had plenty of taco You're fights so over the last fights. couple of days. Yes, yeah, it's not even comp- you know who's going to win before you even get started. And it's it's BB. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated by another Taco Bell product. They got a new grande burritos. I don't have press release about this one, but there's two new flavors of the dollar grande burritos. Mm-hmm. One of the flavor is called Loaded Taco Burrito. Huh. What are you, what are y'all doing? <laughs> like, what are you doing? That's just two of uh, the things. What if, what, are you doing? what if Taco Bell just tweeted like, hey, right now we realize no one's looking, so we're just going to rename everything, everything. Because like, none of y'all are yeah. paying attention. We're going to completely change our menu by the time y'all get back. Listen, we're, we're innovators, and we are not afraid to make bold choices, and we're going to move everything just one over to the left. Yep. And you so, won't notice. Good luck. <laughs> just get you just open like you drive go to the drive thru and like just give me a bag of sludge and bread. Please. Yep. <laughs> just whatever conflagration of that, whatever whatever different permutations you have. Let me get a of, uh, meat and bread. Does that say fettuccine Alfredo? Taco Bell? What the <laughs> fuck? Hey, wait, this is two soft tacos. Yep. You cracked yep. the case. A conflagr. A conflagration is actually a fire, but that actually is a problem. That works I here think, too. In, in our our situation. Okay, speaking nasty hamburger I want a munch. I want to munch. Um, my feeds are filled currently not with menu innovations, which is a cornerstone of the Munch Squad, uh, but uh, just a lot of restaurants that are trying to do something. I mean, a lot of these can we live stream a taco? Is is that anything? Uh, bud, you're not that far off. Um, actually, Travis, uh, you must be reading ahead. Rob (laughs) Gregowski is going to join. Uh, Chipotle for Thursday's virtual hangout. <laughs> so everybody's kind of wondering what they can do, right? And I, there's a lot of brands that are just like, how do we, Bojangles, step in and try to do something about this? What is Bojangles' role in all of this? And I can safely do that because they closed the Bojangles in Huntington, so nobody can get me. You can't, you can't do anything to hurt me, Bojangles. We will learn to. I'm invincible. We will learn to eat Bojangles and hold each other through the waves of the web. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Gronkows- Gronkowski is going to join Chipotle for Thursday's virtual hangout. While people face ongoing challenges of spending time apart, Chipotle wants to connect with its fans and deliver some much-needed positive vibes. Chipotle is teaming up with famous brand super fans to host Chipotle together. So, yes, they're both in caps. Chipotle together, a series of virtual hangouts for fans <laughs> oh that feature celebrity appearances, exclusive content, and free entree giveaways. Oh God. Folks, before I go too much deeper, I want to say, if someone says, what are you doing today? And you say, well, I'm going to hang out with Chipotle and Rob Gaki <laughs> virtually. <laughs> That is very much a second month of quarantine answer. Yes. Like we will accept that and say, I think Chipotle thinks people are a lot more desperate right, right. now than they are. Maybe it's, it's been like a week and a half. We're hanging in yeah, there. Been, like this is for spitballing new hobbies, right? Like you've just taken up knitting or painting, and, but by April the knitting stuff's in the fucking garbage, and you're fucking burritoing out with Gronk. Yes. Now, here's what I will say. Uh, if the pitch was, we have overstuffed this burrito, and you're going to watch Rob Gronkowski try to navigate it, I, yeah, yeah. that's maybe a third yeah, week. ASMR, that, yeah. that might be a third week of the quarantine thing. Yeah, they've just, I, th- I feel like they've jumped the gun a little bit. Uh, Thursday's Chipotle together. It's scheduled for 2 p.m., so you missed this one, but I'm sure there's going to be another. It's going to feature football legend Rob Gronk Gronkowski. And wrestler Mojo, who will host a 30 minute at home workout for fans on his Instagram, um, participate in a QA and give away 5,000 free burritos. Now, I'm going to assume it is a coupon and not <laughs> some sort of elaborate, maybe drone based burrito delivery. Or pneumatic system. tubes. Or orbital cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Funk. Ow! Gronkowski has the nuclear football, which he loves, 
and he will use the orbital cannon to blast big, big burritos right down your chimney like a Santa Claus would. <laughs> Chipotle has rolled out a series of innovations to elevate the delivery experience for its fans, which is a wild way of saying this. But they, um, so they've got delivery kitchens, which feature dedicated teams and ingredient stations to prepare digital orders with care. Good. The second thing it says is new tamper evident packaging seals to help ensure food is untouched during delivery. Ooh. Can we stop for a second? <laughs> has, has this been, hey, Chipotle, hey. can we talk over here? Uh, has this been an ongoing concern <laughs> that you're just now alerting me to? Have you been aware of a problem with food being touched you, during delivery? You should have shared this information with the rest right. of us. Yes, right. We, I just so we're clear, I'm not loving that during the coronavirus pandemic. I'm also similarly not loving it before and or after. I really, if you had the one knowledge of this problem and two ability to stop it, it's morally delinquent that you have done nothing about it to this point. We have finally, and, we have finally begun encouraging our employees to stop slapping the sour cream when they open it to test the surface <laughs> tension. Why? That's the thing. Unless you can offer me a tamper-proof like thing that lets me know it wasn't touched while it was being made either, I think there is still an opportunity for contamination there. Because my concern wasn't that the person driving it would be like, I want to see what they got on their burrito. Yeah, let me pop this open real quick and get a real quick touch going. I just want to take stock of whether they got the pico de gallo or not. Like, no, I don't think that's the concern. I want a tamper-evident burrito where if you open it, it just fucking explodes and shouts you and refried beans like a like a uh, a bait bag at a bank or something like that. <laughs> this is our bait car, but it's a burrito, and if mm -hmm. you even touch it, the cops will swarm. Uh, how about another question? How would that treat everybody? Yeah, that sounds good. Do, 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 do. Okay, huh? but is that bad? No, you sounded disappointed. No, I just it's it's uh sometimes I, I want a munch. Whoa. I want to munch. Now it's bad. That was a punk one. Who? It's like grimy punk. That was really fuck yeah, man. Punky. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's really punky. Snack um, flag. Uh, but why did I take it back to, I took it back to uh, more retro because I have an exciting new development. Uh, and this, I, I have to give the, the, uh, the credit. This was not necessarily my idea, but I think it is, is uh, genius. This came in from Quinn, and Quinn suggested a throwback munch squad oh. that we go back, way back, to before. And not just like to a few years back, ones we might have missed. We dig deep. Oh, right. I mean, so I, it, I'm putting out the call. If you can get some press releases from like wild shit that came before like Library of Congress to find like get, when McDonald's did pizza. Yeah, um, that's what I'm talking about. Find me those press releases. Dig way deep. Let's get nasty. In big big pizza war, will Bigfoot top the Dominator? Oh, God. Yes. Oh, yes, yeah. Yes. This is a listen, folks. This is a news story published. It's by Michael Dresser, published in the Baltimore Sun on April 30th, 1993. Wow. This is a I'm, blow the dust off. <laughs> the smudge squad. Oh, man, this is good. I'm really excited. I've been really excited the whole show to read this to y'all. Is that why you killed uh, Sonic? Hasta la pizza, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good start. Hasta la pizza, baby. Here comes the Dominator, <laughs> boasting that it has created the biggest, baddest hunk of hunk of melted cheese oh, on God. the market. Fuck me. Domino's Pizza Inc. lurched into the monster pizza wars yesterday yes. with a 30 inch, <gasps> 30 slice pie in the face Woo. of its competitor. That's one. Uh, hold up. Each slice yeah, is wait. one inch? Fuck this off. This is what it's challenging. Brought to life in Domino's Laboratories in Ann Arbor, Michigan, the Dominator will grapple with Pizza Hut's Bigfoot and Little Caesar's Big Big Pizza for the biggest bite of the market for carryout pizza. With a gland condition. Okay. Hilarious. Reggie fils May is. his biggest failure in his time at the Pizza Hut, and perhaps his biggest professional failure was 
the uh, Pizza Hut Bigfoot pizza, and now Domino's is challenging Reggie's failure with uh, the Dominator. Domino's Rectangular Dominator, uh-huh. so that should m- make more sense, right? It will measure a... Sh- fucking 1993. Measure a Schwarzeneggerian... Schwarzeneggerian 10 inches by 30 inches. Okay, 10 inches by 30 inches. So that's... T- Tim, 300 Mac, inches. it's 300 square inches of pizza inches. in 30 yes. slices. Each slice is 10. Okay, I was getting there. Square inches. I was going to yeah. get there, Justin. You have to let me do it on my own if I'm ever going to get better at it. Laid side by side, it's bigger than my three-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> Who I have always Dad, wanted let to me eat. Up. <laughs> Said a Domino's spokesman, Tim McIntyre. <laughs> Later, bigger than my it. three-year-old. <laughs> Oh wait, hold the on. Mi- I'm I'm reading right here. It says, okay, yeah, uh huh, okay, okay. This 27, 30 year old, thirty year old man just killed his dad. Oh, it was this, and he said it's because he used to lay me next to pizza. I laid my kid next to a pizza for a thing I wanted to say. The "Mine's Bigger Than Yours" contest got started in oh, earnest boy. last month when Little Caesars began the national rollout of its eleven and a quarter by twenty two and a half inch big big pizza on the Ides of March. That roused the wrath of Pizza the Hut, which went Little Caesar a step bigger, bigger by tromping out its big, this fucking big ups to you, Michael Dresser, for putting in the fucking work. Yeah, dude. Putting in the work. You don't see this kind of attention to detail anymore in these press releases. That Ides of March thing is a goof on the fact that it's Little Caesar. Yes. Fucking layers upon layers of melted cheese and sauce and bread. Uh, now here comes the Dominator. <laughs> I delighted Travis. Now here comes the Dominator, scheduled to begin hitting the stores in various markets. Whether Baltimore is one hasn't been decided huh? in about two weeks. In a switch from Domino's traditional emphasis on delivered pizza, it will be available by carryout only. That's right, folks. You can't get this sent to your house. You have to go. You have to come here to do this because it's a crime otherwise. Huh. We don't even know if our 1993 automobiles could handle a pizza this large. The market that we're going after, the carryout value pizza market, is a very hungry one, said Mr. McIntyre. <laughs> Why not be the biggest? Hey, Tim, you've said several wild things altogether. <laughs> With very few wild words, you said a very wild thing, and that is pizza hungry people love a hungry pizza. Get it big. <laughs> so you're saying hungry people want a big pizza. Yes. What about two pizzas? What? You could do huh? two pizzas and have both. Huh? And, and somebody could bring them to you and you wouldn't have to leave your house. But big people with big hunger only have one mouth. Nice try. They drive, a, they drive a car. Come get big pizza. They love leaving house. Hey guys, I'm not halfway through this story and I'm not a third into the wildest shit in it. Okay. But what really accounts for this mega pizza trend? Have the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles multiplied? Oh, Jesus. Is President Clinton's White House staff pulling too many all nighters for ordinary pizzas? Oh, boy. <laughs> Fucking just keep it coming. It's like I know it's written in 93. But I feel like it was written to be read in 2020 to take you on a fucking, I love the 90s. He he finished it and sealed it up and then just like buried it in Justin's front yard. It's like, I feel like I'm I'm watching like Good Night and Good Gene Shalit. It's fantastic. (laughs) This is, this is the quote. It would go a long way towards sating the hunger of the healthcare task force, said a spokesman in the White House press office, who asked to be identified only as assistant to the president in charge of pizza control. Oh. What in the living fuck? <laughs> the only problem, he said, is security. It's dangerous. Quote, you could fit a lot of stuff on a pizza that big, he said. <laughs> Fucking story. Do you, do you know that originally prince titled the song pizza control and then they said well i don't think that that's risque make enough it, for make prince. It yuckier, and he said, prince and he said okay i can i can I, I think i can zhuzh it up a little bit this person this white house staffer was reached out to for a quote about the big pizzas and made a fun joke about oh i don't know we love pizza around here and then realized like wait a minute some, <laughs> you could you could stick a lot of anthrax in a 30 square inch pizza and this was pre 9-11 when they didn't even check the pizzas, right? No. Like a lot of things changed on 9-11. You used to be able to just walk up and hand a pizza directly to the president. A you lot of things I mean? also it changed was... in the fall of 1993 when these That's big pizzas true. came around. 
Oh, uh, God, where to next? Oh, that's right. Okay. Fucking Michael Dresser, you genius. Uh, but futurist Melinda Davis said, this big pizza business has nothing to do with politics. <gasps> it's about sex. What? What? Huh? <laughs> huh? Consider this. Consider the shape, she said. Pizza was traditionally a very female thing. Well, it's very round and cheesy and warm. <laughs> and suddenly it? it's become pizza as a weapon, said Miss Davis. What? Creative director at Brain Reserve, a New York-based marketing firm that specializes in consumer trends. What also, someday fuck? everyone will have phones that are also computers. <laughs> but it's just... are they saying a rectangle is like a dick is like a weapon? Not like well, women who are round and warm cheese. Yes. That's a, yes, that is a that is a profound and hugely wrong statement, obviously, but prof it's like I don't even know if it's sexist or not because it's so hard to unpack. Well, I think I think we can all agree that uh, people who identify as female give off a certain warm, cheesy, cheesy energy, vibe. Yeah. Whereas men who we, people who identify as men uh, often give off this kind of wreck. Rectangular, oh yeah, kind of. Uh, why is it? Why are they so big? I, I've got um, big rhombus energy over here. Pizza was traditionally a very female thing. It's very round and cheesy and warm, and suddenly it's become pizza as a weapon," said Miss Davis. But why? Quote, because we're in the age of AIDS. We we'll have to look for sensual pleasure that isn't sexual. She said, it's about anger. What? It's about rage. What? Consumers are really mad at all the rules they have to follow in the 90s. What is happening? Sue Sherbo, a spokeswoman for Little Caesars in Detroit, seemed puzzled by that logic. <laughs> Quote, our only concern was to offer our customer a great value. <laughs> we weren't even looking at it from the AIDS angle. If I'm Sue doesn't honest. agree that people want to fuck the giant pizza. <laughs> Sue can't get there with her. What, Justin? This isn't just a. This isn't a munch quad. This is this is the greatest news article ever written. This is the greatest interviewing ever ever That's what done. I'm saying, Michael Tresser, you you fucking genius. Okay. Thank you. Uh, at Michael Dresser, by the way, in case you want to just thank Michael, Michael T. Dresser, excuse me, in case you want to thank Michael, he's retired now, but you can still thank him for his amazing work, which I'm not finished with. What is the in statute any case, of limitations for a Pulitzer, by the way? Is it too late? <laughs> <laughs> That's a weird way of asking the question, but in this case, it does apply. Yes. In any case, Domino's competitors have no intention of trying to go at one bigger. Quote, we think it's the right size pizza for what our customer is looking for. Rob Dowdy, a spokesman for at Pizza Hut headquarters in Wichita, Kansas, said yesterday, quote, teenagers tend to travel in packs, <gasps> in groups, uh -huh. and usually they're a bit short of cash, cash. So this is the kind of product they're looking for. Huh. Ma Mr. McIntyre said he could not say whether the Dominator will be sold in the Baltimore market because the decision on whether to carry the product will be left to individual operators. Now, a spokeswoman at the regional office, Michael Dresser putting in the work, the shoe leather, a spokeswoman at the regional office said she did not know whether Baltimore area franchisees would be interested. I assure you, ma'am, they will be. <laughs> in any case, Mr. McIntyre said Domino's will be heavily promoting the Dominator in a few months. Quote, it's a big colossal humongous pizza and we're looking at ads that will come across in a big colossal humongous way wow. epilogue <gasps> joseph simone president of mama Ilardo's corp said his relatively small owings mills based pizza chain would not be intimidated by its bigger rivals nor will it be drawn into an effort at topping them quote you can't serve top quality ingredients in a product that size and not price yourself out of the market, he said. It's like the difference between making sauce for two people and making sauce for the fifth infantry. Huh. The end. I guess I've never thought of it that way. Travis, just let it. Just give Travis, it a moment. Let it breathe. Okay. Just give it a moment. The end. Thank you, Michael Dresser. Thank you for this um, fantastic fantastic piece you really put literally tens of thousands of times the amount of effort this story required of you and you put in the fucking work mm -hmm. and thank you i appreciate you thank you this is the best news story i've read certainly in the past few weeks <laughs> i 
I I would like to think that after this was published, the uh, that Michael's bosses said like, okay, we're moving you to like cover homicide. Like, yeah, okay, I, yeah, I, right. I don't know if Michael Dresser is writing about current sort of pandemic events, but I hope he does not apply the same level of frivolity to it. I'm sure he doesn't. No. I bet he matches the tone of the news he's writing. It is not like, holy smokes. It's the disease, like, probably My like corona. That. Yeah. He, <laughs> yeah. He, uh, he retired in December of 2018 as the state house correspondent for the Baltimore Sun. Okay. Hell yes. Qu- got out Michael on top. Michael Dresser, you, you absolute legend. Uh, 